what's happening right now and how low do you think it can go? Well, I think we're in a risk-off period, and uh, for for all assets, if you if you look at the the stock market, the the more risky or volatile parts of the market have come in dramatically since mid February, and I think a lot of the concerns have been around inflation. Initially, that was helping Bitcoin uh, because obviously Bitcoin's a very important inflation hedge. You know, it's a it's a rules-based monetary policy, the first global rules-based monetary policy we have ever had. Had. Hugely important reserve currency of the crypto asset ecosystem. Uh, but I think uh, what's happening right now is because the stock market, the highly volatile part of the stock market, the innovation oriented part of the stock market has gone through such a correction, which has been flamed by inflation fears. Uh, I think I think the correlations uh, among volatile assets are going to one right now, and that's including Bitcoin. Well, I want to unpack a couple of things. So Bitcoin, I mean, you at one point, I think back in April, told Dow Jones that it could go to about $500,000. Do you still hold that target? Do you still think that's where we're headed? I, I, we do. I do. Yasin Almandra is our uh, crypto analyst and, and uh, we we go through soul searching times like this and, and scrape the models. And yes, our conviction is as high. The one thing that has changed here, however, is the environmental concerns around uh, Bitcoin in particular have mm -hmm. uh, caused uh, people like Elon Musk to pull away and say, whoa, 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 let, let, me, let me make sure I understand this. And uh, we believe that even this is going to change because, first of all, right now, uh, the percentage of Bitcoin mined with renewables and hydroelectric power is quite substantial. I think in uh, China, it's over 50 percent in renewables. Uh, and we also believe uh, uh, and we wrote a paper uh, in conjunction with Square on this, and we're going to have a conference about it in July. We believe that Bitcoin mining integrated into the distributed grid, and by that I mean solar roofs, power walls in homes, uh, utilities, merchant power producers, uh, starting to include Bitcoin mining in the ecosystem. Why would they do that? They would do it because renewables are intermittent power sources, right? Weather, is it sunny or not? Wind, is it windy or not? And Bitcoin mining could take off if it's if there's excess energy uh, uh, from solar being loaded into power walls, it can be offloaded into Bitcoin mining and the whole ecosystem therefore becomes much more economic. If this happens, we believe that the, the uh, adoption of solar is going to accelerate dramatically because there's another profit center associated with it, Bitcoin mining. Well, what happens though in the meantime? So here we are at 35,000, Kathy. Do you think we go much lower from here? Uh, you never know how low is low when a market gets very emotional. Uh, a lot of traders see Bitcoin uh, dropping below the 200 day moving average. Uh, which right. is which was at forty thousand. Uh, so traders, once that happened, they just dump. Some just uh, dump and run. Uh, I think we're in a capitulation phase. Uh, Yassine has uh, a dashboard. We were looking at all the indicators this morning. They are all suggesting that we are in the capitulation phase, which is a really great time to buy, uh, no matter what the asset is. A capitulation phase is buy. It's on sale. Now, am I saying 35000 is the low? You know, if traders, uh, and there are a lot of speculators in, in Bitcoin, if they are uh, running for the hills just because uh, Bitcoin has broken through a moving average that is important to them, it could continue. But uh, all of our indicators are saying this is capitulation right now. Do you have a low point on your model for Bitcoin? No, these metrics uh, are, are more a, a measure. Uh, are we in a truly capitulation phase? Okay. And it's very detailed. Yassine uses on-chain analysis, which this is the only asset where you can see exactly who's doing what, when, why, and how. Uh, and all of those metrics are saying, this is a capitulation. This is as, as bad as it got during the coronavirus crisis.
So what about systemic concerns? And I'm not talking about bringing down the financial system, but you know more and more of kind of the establishment are getting involved in Bitcoin. A lot more companies have Bitcoin on their balance sheet. Should we be concerned about their exposure? Tesla, for one, but others. Yes, yes. Well, they're usually, in the case of Square and Tesla, they're between five and 8% of their cash is in uh, Bitcoin. Uh, so- I don't think so. That's no cause for concern. I mean, think about it. We were worried that uh, Tesla would run out of cash. Of course, ARC was not worried, but the world was worried two years ago that it would run out of cash. It has so much cash now that it has the luxury to put five to eight percent in in Bitcoin. So uh, uh, MicroStrategy is another company. It has almost all its cash in Bitcoin. That's that's mm-hmm. perhaps something different, you know. Uh, but as I said, if we are in the capitulation uh, phase, we shouldn't be worried about MicroStrategy either. Uh, I, we do believe this is a new asset class and that institutions They are looking at it right now because the correlations of relative returns and total returns to compare to other asset classes tends to be very low over time. Uh, And so they have to look at it. Now, ESG might prevent a a move in wholesale, uh, but we do believe that once they understand how renewables are becoming incorporated into the Bitcoin mining ecosystem uh, and that Bitcoin mining might accelerate the adoption of solar, uh, and I think Elon will come back and be a part of that ecosystem as well. So why do you think he came out and said, wait a minute, maybe I'm going to back off of Bitcoin? Um, What do you think his concern was? What was his nervousness? Well, I think he moved in because uh, he's been thinking, watching, like we all have, basically unhinged monetary policies. They're not tied to anything anymore. Uh, Whereas Bitcoin is mathematically metered to top out at 21 million units, and we're approaching 19 million now. So the scarcity factor should increase and support the price. We do believe uh, that is what is going to be supporting the price in here. I believe what happened after he took the position in Bitcoin is he got a pushback from institutional shareholders like BlackRock. If you've got Larry Fink, you know, beating the drum on climate change as uh, one of the most important uh, topics uh, and problems of our time, uh, then uh, he was going to have to face those sorts of concerns. I don't think he expected that. And uh, now that he's sorting it out, learning more about the environmental impact, I think he'll come back into the mix. We certainly hope he will. Uh, uh, I don't know if he's going to be part of the conference in in July or not. It would be he would be a very good addition because I think he would provide both sides of the equation. How quickly could the adoption of solar uh, accelerate if we introduce mining into that ecosystem? Do you expect a Bitcoin ETF to get approved anytime soon? And I'm curious if you plan to launch a crypto ETF anytime soon. You know, I think, well, now that uh, uh, Gary Gensler is uh, head of the SEC, uh, he's Bitcoin friendly. We know that. He taught a class, uh, uh, courses at at MIT before coming back to the SEC. So, and I think the research um, uh, professionals uh, at the SEC, uh, they understand Bitcoin in particular and uh, and I, I think are much more comfortable with it now that we've had several years to digest what exactly it is, go through a bear market, go through a bull market, now go through a bit of a bear market. I think uh, watching uh, the uh, ecosystem evolve and actually become Uh, even more anti-fragile. You know, we're getting some real tests here. And if the system doesn't break, and I don't think it will, I think that their comfort will increase in a couple uh, of ways. Number one, the infrastructure is there, is robust. Number two, the liquidity is there. Uh, I don't think think that's going to be disproven here. And number three, the price is down from very lofty levels. So, hey, why not start uh, an ETF after a correction in in the market uh, than before? So I actually think the odds are going up now that we've had this correction. 
election. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be this year or not. Uh, we hear perhaps fourth quarter, uh, but you know we heard uh, third quarter before that. So as we get closer to the fourth quarter, we'll know how much is being pushed out.